Okay, today I'm going to show you how to install and run programs with Subuser. And I'm also going to demonstrate what it means for a program to be installed with Subuser. When I type in the Subuser command, subuser list available, I get a list of programs that can be installed with a single command. You can add to this list, it's no problem. You just have to create a few files. But let's work with the pre-configured applications for now. So, in order to install a program, we can type subuser install hmm, xterm. It takes a bit longer than it would take installing an application through apt-get, even though it's running apt-get, because when I type subuser install xterm, I'm getting a new Docker container with only xterm installed, so it has to install all of the dependencies. This also means that xterm will take up a bit more space than if xterm was installed normally on your system. But there's big advantages to this. One of the advantages is that subuser install xterm will work everywhere. Well, everywhere that there's Linux, or at least Docker. So, now we have xterm installed. So, one important thing is that right now I'm in the subuser directory. When I type xterm and I type ls, I can see that I'm in the subuser directory again. But if I go cd dot dot and I type ls, I see that I'm not in my home directory. Even though if I were to be here, I see a whole bunch of my own, pro, uh, my own files. But in xterm, those files are invisible. xterm has access to my current working directory, and that's it. Xterm can see the files that it's allowed to see based off of its permissions.json file, which we can see by listing, if we go to subuser, programs that can be installed, cd xterm. If we then cat the permissions.json file, or we could edit this file even, we could see what Xterm's uh, permissions are. Xterm is allowed to display X11 windows. It's not allowed to play sounds. It does inherit the working directory, and it's allowed to access the internet. So, uh, this is Xterm, but let's try some more applications. Let's try opening up Firefox. Programs take a little bit longer to start up because the file system with Docker is a little bit weird and it has to do some extra work, I think. Maybe there's a different reason why it takes so long to start up. I haven't actually profiled it yet. But anyways, you see that even though I'm on Debian, and on Debian, Ice Weasel and not Firefox is normally installed. Since Docker bases its images by default on Ubuntu, we have Firefox. So this is Firefox running in Docker. And with subuser, Firefox doesn't have full permissions to do what it wants with your whole system. If we go to open a file and we look around, all that Firefox has in its home directory is a downloads folder. So you can see I've downloaded some things. But anyways, the, the rest of the things that would be normally in my home directory, if I go to my home directory here, I guess my computer's just slow. This is my home directory. But this is what Firefox thinks my home directory looks like. So Firefox can't access my whole system, and that's kind of the point of subuser. Firefox, unlike Xterm, has even less uh, permissions. So if we look at the permissions of Firefox, you can see that it can access the downloads directory, but it can't inherit the current working directory. So it can't access the directory from which it was launched. It can only access one directory on your system. So, not all applications can work on with subuser. I tried Chromium, and it doesn't work. 
uh, Firefox, when I play a video with YouTube, it doesn't have sound. But let's see what else can run. LibreOffice runs. And again, LibreOffice has its own home directory, and it has access to the current working directory it was launched from. But it doesn't have access to the whole system. So, subuser is intended to make your system more secure. It does so by allowing programs to view your file system with things called volumes. There's a lot of complicated things going on in the Docker level, and I've made it all work out correctly for you. So you can just type Firefox, Xterm, LibreOffice, or whatever the name of your application is, and it runs as if it was running on your computer. That's all I have to present for you today, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it.